How the Kidney Works, Part 1, by kscience.com. The first part of the nephron we're going to talk about is the Bowman's capsule. So this here is the Bowman's capsule. Inside the Bowman's capsule, you're going to find a network of capillaries. These capillaries that are appearing now are the glomerulus, whereby the glomerulus is a network of capillaries that surround the Bowman's capsule. The next part of the nephron that we're going to look at is called the first convoluted tubule. So what I'm drawing now is the first convoluted tubule. The first convoluted tubule connects the Bowman's capsule of the nephron to what I'm drawing now called the loop of Henle. This is the loop of Henle. This part of the nephron that I'm drawing is the second convoluted tubule. You do not need to know the function of the second convoluted tubule. The second convoluted tubule connects the loop of Henle to the collecting duct. So what I'm drawing now is the collecting duct inside the nephron, inside the kidney. This is the ureter. So the collecting duct passes into the ureter, which then connects to the bladder. So the collecting duct connects to the bladder via the ureter. So this is the collecting duct. This is the ureter. And this is the bladder. And surrounding the nephron is a series of capillaries. So capillaries surround the nephron. They allow molecules to be reabsorbed from the nephron back into the blood. The function of the nephron and the kidneys is to filter out and then reabsorb useful nutrients. So in the blood you find urea, you find proteins inside the blood, and of course red blood cells. You also find water, as well as glucose. So the molecules we're going to be talking about today are urea, protein, water, blood cells and glucose. The first function of the kidney is to filter molecules out of the blood. This happens between the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. As you can see here, urea leaves the blood and enters into the Bowman's capsule. Water also leaves the glomerulus and is filtered out of the blood into the Bowman's capsule. And glucose is also filtered out of the glomerulus, out of the blood, into the Bowman's capsule inside the nephron. These molecules have to pass through a partially permeable membrane, like the one I'm drawing now. But proteins and red blood cells are too large to be able to pass through the partially permeable membrane from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. Whereas glucose, water and urea are small enough to pass through the partially permeable membrane of glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule of the nephron. And we call this stage filtration because molecules are filtered out of the blood and some molecules are left behind in the blood. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. I'm now going to explain what happens in the first convoluted tubule of the nephron. So remember that urea, water and glucose were filtered from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. So in the first convoluted tubule you now find water, glucose and urea. And it is in the first convoluted tubule that glucose is reabsorbed into the blood. So glucose is reabsorbed into the blood by active transport inside the first convoluted tubule. So this is where selective reabsorption happens, where selective reabsorption of glucose back into the blood from the nephron. There should be no glucose in your nephron at this point. It should all be reabsorbed back into the blood. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Now we're going to look at what happens in the loop of Henle. So water and urea now enter the loop of Henle. Water is now reabsorbed back into the blood from the loop of Henle inside the nephron. 
So it's in this part of the kidney, in the loop of Henle, where water is reabsorbed back into the blood. So remember, it's inside the loop of Henle where water is reabsorbed back into the blood. Not all the water is reabsorbed back into the blood from the loop of Henle. A lot of the water is going to enter the collecting duct. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. So now the remaining urea and water enter the collecting duct via the second convoluted tubule. In the collecting duct, water is going to be reabsorbed back into the blood. Water is reabsorbed back into the blood. And if there is a high concentration of water in your blood and you're really hydrated, much of that water in the collecting duct is going to pass through the ureta to the bladder and out of your body. So any remaining urea and water that needs to be excreted is going to be excreted as urine. So this water and urea mixture is going to pass through the ureta into the bladder where it is stored. Remember, so the function of the bladder is to store urine, which is a water and urea mixture. The urine stored in the bladder is then passed out of the body via the urethra. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Press pause to practice using those key words. The answers will follow. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. And if you're stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Visit kscience.com for more free videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com and don't forget to like and subscribe.